welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I am your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and today we're talking about how to parent your Taurus child when you're a Scorpio mom or a Scorpio dad. Man, it has been a uh, an interesting summer, just an overwhelming summer. Um, I recorded uh, my TED Talk, which went live a few weeks ago. I'm going to post the link down below if you'd like to check it out. It is on teens and boundaries and how to empower teens to have healthy boundaries in the digital age, which is more important than ever. As you know, if you listen to this channel for a while, boundaries is a key theme I talk about. So it's no surprise that we are going to be discussing it when we discuss our topic today. So as always, I'm going to give a high level overview of Taurus energy, an overview of Scorpio energy, and then I'm going to talk about the main points to keep in mind when you are the Scorpio parent, parenting the Taurus child. Okay, so first, these are both feminine energy fixed signs. They are also opposite signs, which we'll get to a little bit more in detail here in a couple minutes. First, Taurus is uh, fixed earth. I've talked about Taurus children in other videos. It is a stabilizing, dependable, energy. It is a reliable energy. It is an energy that um, the stereotype is it uh, can be materialistic, but I, I would not, that's not how I would describe it. Of course, as soon as I start recording, my dogs start barking. It's always how it is. It's an energy that is uh, very, that feels attached to everything that Mother Earth provides, the resources that Mother Earth provides. That can be food, Clothing, lodging, Mother Earth provides that either directly or indirectly, right? So um, it's an energy that feels very comfortable with those resources. So I would not call it a materialistic energy. I would call it an energy that feels comfortable when it is surrounded by resources. It feels comfortable when it has stability, when it has a home base, things like that. Taurus children need a reliable, predictable stable home environment. Yes, all children need that, ideally. Some children um, need it more strongly than others. Some children can weather change a little bit more easily. Some children can weather transitions a little bit more easily. Some children like spontaneity, but Taurus likes to know what's coming next. It likes the predictable nature of things. It likes the routine. Nothing wrong with any of that. So as we said, of all the signs, Taurus is the most closely asso associated with Mother Earth. It's ruled by the planet Venus. It's a tactile sign. It, Taurus people can, can be a little touchy-feely. It's possible they're, it's very possible that their love language is physical touch, physical affection. They like to give and receive hugs. So when Venus is in the sign of Taurus in the chart, that is a very comfortable placement. That placement makes the chart holder warm and affectionate. It's an energy that, as we said, values material comfort. I wouldn't call that materialistic necessarily. It's not necessarily the um, accumulation of goods just to accumulate them. It's uh, the material comforts are very grounding and give stability to the Taurus child. Also, Taurus children often like to have their things around them. Like they may like to collect things. Uh, and they may like to have their possessions and belongings around them, that that gives them some peace of mind. I've noticed that children in the, with, they have their moon in the second house, which is the house associated with Taurus related themes, uh, tend to have that characteristic, that they feel comfortable when they have their material possessions around them. It's very comforting. Those children often uh, find it difficult or challenging to let go of those possessions, even if they don't have any real practical use for them because it's very comforting. Like children who have moon in the second house or moon in Taurus very often have that characteristic, I find. But it's not about materialism. It's about the sense of comfort and predictability and dependability that those possessions give them. So earth energy also tends to be very controlled. It is a grounded, controlled energy. It can even be a stoic energy. It's sometimes challenging for Earth children to release those emotions. You find that a lot more frequently with Capricorn kids, Capricorn sun and moon kids, very stoic, very reserved, emotionally reserved. 
it's hard for them to really be vulnerable and express themselves emotionally. And Taurus, being an earth sign, has that tendency as well. It's a sign that that um, does very well in the give and take of one-on-one -on -one relationships, but it does find it challenging sometimes to, to emotionally release. So if you're parenting a Taurus child, what do you want to focus on instead of getting them to talk to you? What do you want to focus on is creating the environment where they feel comfortable opening up to you and allowing them to open up in their own time. Taurus being fixed earth is, I don't want to call it a slow energy. To other energies, it appears slow. I don't want to call it that, give it a negative connotation, but compared to other energies, it can be slow. All right. Meaning that Taurans, Taurans, uh, they have a stubbornness about them, fixed earth, not a bad thing, makes them reliable and grounded, but they also will do things in their own time. If you have a Taurus child, more than likely you may be frustrated with them getting ready for school, getting ready to go out the door, just getting things done. It's that fixed earth energy that's, that's making them be like that. They will do things in their own time. And when you rush them or pressure them, they will just take longer. That's the nature of that energy. So as the parent of a Taurus child, whether Taurus sun or Taurus moon, you want to focus on creating the relationship and the space and the environment where they feel comfortable eventually opening up to you in their own time. Okay. If you have, for example, uh, a child with moon and Gemini, they're naturally chatty. They're naturally going to talk. They are com compelled. They feel compelled to tell you things. Okay. Tauren, Taurus energy is very different. Also, being a feminine energy earth sign, Taurus children, Taurus people in general, rely on what they can have physical contact with. They rely on their senses and what they can physically sense. They give a lot of credence to that. So you have a water sign person who will know things or feel things or make decisions based on how they intuit, right? Even if they can't physically touch something or sense something with the five senses, Taurus people like to be able to have some evidence. And by that, I mean sensing it, using their five senses to sense uh, uh, from a practical standpoint, as opposed to mentally or emotionally intuiting it. They believe things they can touch. I always think of uh, Jerry Maguire, when I think of earth energy, show me the money, like show it to me, right? That's what you, that's what you kind of have to think about. So, and I love this quote from astrologer. I quote relationship astrologer, Stephen Arroyo on this channel all the time, because he's so great. Uh, this quote about Taurus from Stephen Arroyo, uh, their innate understanding of how the material world functions gives the earth signs more patience and self-discipline than other signs. They have quote, a practically, a practical they have, quote, a practical ability to utilize the material world. Now, that quote is about earth signs in general. So definitely uh, describes all three earth signs. We want to keep it in mind when we're talking about Taurus today, because we're talking about parenting a Taurus from the point of view of the Scorpio parent. And the energy, although complementary, is very different. So Taurus tends to be cautious, and it also tends to be conventional. So in another video I did on Taurus children, I talked about how Taurus energy seems to be more drawn to a, the conventional path. Nothing wrong with that. But if you're somebody who uh, has a strong, uh, if you're somebody who has a different type of energy, maybe a lot of Aquarius energy or Gemini energy or um, Aries energy, you have to do your own thing, right? Or a very prominent uh, Uranus in your chart, you may feel compelled to do things differently, not to not to you know live life in the conventional way, right? So Taurus, that fixed earth energy is more conventional. So again, nothing wrong with that. It's important to let your child be your child, to let them follow their own path. We don't want to imprint our characteristics and our values on the kids, on our kids. We definitely want to, in my opinion, we should share our values when it's when it's appropriate, when we are asked for our opinions about them, uh, share and be communicative and open and give reasons and rationale for why we have the values we have and why we make the decisions we make and things like that. But we want to be very careful about imprinting our values on the kids. Now, I often talk about that in the context of 
imprinting on our kids to be conventional, right? Like, well, you know, you grow up and you go to college and you go to grad school and you go get married and have kids and have the house and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's a path many people follow and that's great and that's wonderful. So um, my point is, I often talk about that in the context of us wanting to imprint a conventional lifestyle on our kids. But here I'm talking about the opposite. Taurus tends to be more conventional. Not always, because when we're talking about Taurus energy today, we're talking about it in a vacuum. We don't have a chart in front of us where we can look at all the parts, right? But so you want to be careful as a parent of a Taurus child not to imprint the other way, not to imprint on your kid, hey, you should not be doing things that your peers do. You should not be uh, pursuing things that everybody else seems to want to pursue because you feel different. You're more of an individualist, right? And and so you want to be careful about imprinting that on your kid either way. You want to be careful about uh, conveying to your kid that they should live that way. They should live the life that they are called to live with your guidance. I just want to point that out because that is definitely a dynamic that may happen. Stephen Arroyo also says that Taurus children have this innate sense of the rhythm of life, which is great. It's an, it's an energy that really allows the chart holder to live in the present moment. Like, for example, a Gemini person like me, I'm constantly thinking about what I have to do. Well, after I record this video, I have to do X, Y, and Z. And tomorrow I have to do this, this, this. And I often get frustrated because my body cannot keep up with my mind. Like, my body moves way too slowly. And I would like things to be done as soon as they occur to me. It, clearly, that cannot happen. It's physically impossible. But it's I'm still frustrated by it. But Taurus people, as as the other, like the other Earth signs, are really good at going with the flow of life and living in the present moment. They are also very good in a crisis. All the earth signs are good in a crisis, right? Because they are very practical. And instead of freaking out, they will take the steps necessary to do what needs to be done in the crisis. So I would not surprise me if, if you're the Scorpio parent and your kid is a Taurus, if they are helping you as they get older, if they are helping you solve crises and make decisions, that is the case for my son and me. He is not a Taurus, but um, as a Gemini, I'm very scattered. And there have been times when he said, hey, this is what we do. Like, I can see what we need to do here. And I think, oh, yeah, you're right. Like, I was just too overwhelmed in that moment. So that is very much uh, a possibility when you have a Taurus child. Now, Scorpio energy. I have a whole playlist on Scorpio that you are welcome to listen to Uh on your own, uh, on your, at your convenience. Okay. So I will be very brief here. So Scorpio is fixed water, which is interesting to me because it's, so it's very contradictory to me because water is meant to flow. I mean, water can be stagnant clearly if there's no, if it's a, you know, fixed body of water, um, no outlets and things, but it's really meant to flow. But when you think of fixed water, the propensity for, um, wallowing in your emotions, is what happens there. And that's very much a dynamic that I associate with Scorpio energy. There's always a risk for kind of wallowing in the emotions. Because as we've said in other videos, Scorpio is an energy that feels very intensely. It is about extreme emotion. Uh, to a Scorpio person, feeling negative feelings is better than feeling nothing. That is like the crux of the Scorpio. They need to feel and they make decisions based on how they intuit about things, about how they feel about things, okay? It's a little bit different from Taurus. Although I will point out, these are opposite signs. They're both fixed energy. So earth contains water, it's very complimentary. So you'll you'll hear from astrologers that, that opposite signs sometimes, um, that's a negative aspect or a negative dynamic? I don't think so. I think that opposite signs, clearly they complement each other. They complete each other to some degree. It doesn't mean that it's that there aren't some challenges, but um, I don't see the opposite signs as being a bad thing. The risk here is because the risk, the main risk with this dynamic is if the Scorpio parent has not worked on any healing they have to do. Because Scorpio adults, whether Scorpio sun or Scorpio moon adults, 
very often I find that as kids, they were severely misunderstood because Scorpio is a very private, reserved energy, as we've talked about in other videos. And the parents really have to work hard at creating the environment where there is trust. The kids, Scorpio kids, trust them and are comfortable opening up to them and telling them very vulnerable things. And more often than not, the parents um, don't do that or they don't do it enough. So the Scorpio kid becomes a Scorpio adult who has a lot of reparenting to do. Again, not always, right? But a lot of the time, that's what I find. So um, if the Scorpio parent has not worked effectively on their own healing and their own triggers, then that this can have a very negative effect on the Taurus child because uh, Scorpio will, will tend to be very reserved and stoic about what they're feeling until they feel so intensely that they have to release, emotionally release. And that often can result in an extreme emotional overreaction or a blow up. And to a, a Taurus child who needs predictability and stability, that may lead the child to feel like they have to walk on eggshells around the parent and they, they cannot trust the reliability of the parent and they don't get emotional consistency from the parent. And that's, that's very hard because to, a child like Taurus needs the parent to be emotionally stable and emotionally consistent. So if you, the Scorpio parent, have a lot of work on your triggers you need to do, you need to work on those. You need to make sure you are not emotionally overreacting and you are being emotionally consistent. And a lot of the times we can control our emotional reaction, but we are still conveying some negative stuff with our body language. I know that's that's been me. Uh, even though I wasn't blowing up and yelling and screaming, my body language was conveying a lot of frustration and it was still causing my kid to walk on eggshells around me. So that takes a lot of work. It's a long process, but if you're working on it effectively, uh, that's the key, right? Scorpio, as we've said in other videos, they can be very relentless in the pursuit of what they want. They are the type of parent who may interrogate the kids. Taurus doesn't like that. It doesn't feel comfortable. No kid really likes it, but Taurus really doesn't like it. Because uh, as we've talked about, they like to do things in their own time. They are stubborn. They are patient. It's a slower energy than other, um, other signs. Uh, they will open up when they're ready, not because they're interrogated. Okay, so if if you are the Scorpio parent and you find that your kid is not sharing things with you, look at how you're interacting with your Taurus child. Are you consistently asking them questions? Well, aren't you going to tell me anything? Why aren't you going to tell me anything? Again, you want to create the space where they are comfortable opening up to you. And when you do that, eventually they will tell you everything. And when I work with parents, that is one of the big areas that I help them focus on is creating the space, the dynamic where you are, you know, pulling and attracting your kids to you. You are not pushing them away by interrogating them, by criticizing them, by doing other things. So um, that is an area that I that I have a lot of experience in and that I can help parents with. And if you have more questions about that or interested in booking a free call to talk to me about that, you can click on my link below in the video description. But that's what it's about. It, it's not about uh, interrogating your kids or like over-focusing on them or what we call over-parenting, right? Hovering, being that helicopter parent. It's creating the relationship where your kid knows you are trustworthy, right? And they know that, um, you have their back and you will support them. Okay. And that is, that is something that takes time. You know, quality relationships take time to develop. It is not an overnight process, but the good news is it, your kids, no matter the age, your kids want to attach to you. They want to have that relationship with you. Okay. So you're already halfway there. You just have to make sure that you are doing your part in creating that relationship. So as we talked about at the beginning of this video, I'm going to bring up boundaries because Scorpio and boundaries, it's like those terms go hand in hand. Because as we've said in other videos, uh, one of the characteristics of water energy is it tends to flow outward and blur the boundaries between the Scorpio person and the other person in the relationship. Earth energy is stable and grounded. 
they intuitively know where the boundaries, physical and emotional boundaries are. So again, if you, the Scorpio parent, have boundary work to do, you need to make sure you are doing that work. Okay, that is again one of my main areas that I work on with and uh, work with parents on and focus on is maintaining boundaries um, because so many parents have difficulties having you know maintaining and enforcing boundaries with their kids because they have problems with boundaries in general, not just with the parent-child dynamic, just in general. And what happens is when you start to have healthier boundaries in general you start to have more energy to focus on yourself, your relationship with yourself and your relationship with your kids. It's a beautiful thing and I, I wanna help you do that. So chances are if you, the Scorpio parent, have issues with boundaries and respecting your child's boundaries, the Taurus child will push back on that because they are stubborn, as we've said. Um, so now that's good because the Scorpio person kind of needs to know where the boundaries are. It is essential you respect your child's boundaries. By doing so, you teach them that they are allowed to have boundaries and you are teaching them to respect the boundaries of other people. And if you want more about boundaries, you can watch my video on boundaries. The link is right here. Now, um, with Earth children, because they are so stable and grounded, there's almost always a risk of the parent parentifying the children. And if a Scorpio parent has not done their own effective healing and reparenting work, this risk is even greater. Okay. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to create a dynamic where we are behaving as if the child is our parent, as if the child is responsible for us in some way, as if the child is responsible for our happiness, for our, um, our emotional well-being. The kids are not responsible for the emotional well-being of the parents. Right. So, for example, so we want to be very careful that we're not creating that dynamic. So, again, if you have reparenting work to do, this is this is why it's so important for you to do that. So you're not falling into the dynamic where the child is taking care of you in some way. Even adolescents and teens should not be taking care of parents. Yes, they should be helping out at home. They should be helping and doing chores and helping on the family team. Absolutely. When they're old enough, they can help with the younger kids. Absolutely. But they should not be the primary person responsible for the household or for the parent or for the adults. For example, I've used this example in other videos. The kids should not be responsible for making sure the adults wake up on time to go to work. The adults should be responsible for getting themselves up, right? So in closing, a few of the things to uh, just reiterate and touch on. Taurus children don't like surprises. Remember, they like predictability, dependability. Prepare them ahead of time for things, such as for transitions, for trips, things like that. Again, be consistent in your communication to them. Be consistent in your emotions to them, in your emotional state. It is okay to be upset. It is okay to be irritated with your kids. You can even say, hey, what you said hurt my feelings. Or I'm irritated and I feel bad because... Um, I asked you to do this three days ago and it's still not done. And I feel like, uh, you know, you expect me to do it and it makes me feel like a maid or whatever. That's okay, right? But it's okay to express emotions, but we want to express emotions, even negative emotions to our kids in a an even tempered way, not flying off the handle, yelling and screaming. As we said, fixed earth is a slower energy. You may need to build in extra time for your kids. So you are not uh, running around crazy like I do many days. <laughs> Allow your Taurus child to take their time with things to the extent that you are able to do so. Remember, they don't like to be rushed. And not only that, the more you rush them, the longer they tend to take. But don't worry. What my experience is that kids who are stubborn and strong-willed actually end up doing very well in adulthood precisely because of those qualities. So don't lament those qualities in your kids. It may be more frustrating for you to deal with because the kids are not complying all the time, but that means they will be successful as adults. Okay, and lastly, remember to take care of yourself, okay? Scorpio energy is a soul-oriented energy. Sometimes Scorpio people feel um, very connected to universal consciousness. And as we said, they can feel very intensely and that takes a lot of energy. And because that takes a lot of energy, you end up having to rest to recharge. 
it is okay to rest. Please take the time to rest. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to your kids. Not only that, when your kids see you taking the time to rest and engage in self-care, that's a very important lesson for your kids. You are teaching them that you should be doing those things, that they also should be resting, the importance of rest, of recharge, right? Of downtime between activities, things like that, that you don't need to be in motion all the time. Those are all very important lessons. So remember that. And we will be here very soon with another video about Scorpio. Thank you for uh, your attention.